Welcome, everybody. Good to see you, especially a, a warm welcome to any newcomers. It's a cold morning again, um, but we can worship our Lord with warm hearts. Yeah. Shall, shall we stand? Yeah. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lord, speak to us. Let me hear your word. word. Move among us. That we may behold your glory. Receive our prayers. That, that we, we may learn to trust, trust you. you. Shall we pray? Dear Lord, we need to find out what pleases you. We need to live as children of the light. We need to reflect goodness, righteousness, truth, um, fruit in ourselves. For you are our sun and shield. You bestow your favor and honor upon us, and you withhold nothing back that's good when we walk along your path. And we just praise you this morning, Lord. We exalt you, God, with all our hearts. You reign in glory, in power and love. We worship you, we worship you, Lord, you alone. Worship you, worship you, O holy God. Shall we sing our first song, When I Look? <clears throat> When I look up at the sky, I see the star shining there. When I look up at the tree, I see the bird singing there. When I look down at the cradle, I see the babe lying there. When I look out at his life, I see the love shining through.
Draw me close to you.
Lord, when we, we feel your presence, Lord, and we want to draw close to you, Lord, and we want to look into your face and to worship you, Lord, and thank you for all that you are, your, pure, your pureness, your holiness, your goodness, everything that is perfect, Lord, and we strive in your power to, to reach up to your standards, knowing that we fail and fail and fail again, Lord, but you're always with us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Shall we be seated? And so we pray the colic for purity together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Lord Jesus, you wept over the sins of your city. On our city, nation and world, Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division, jealousy and bitterness. On us, Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Grant us peace. Lord, have mercy. The Spirit of the Lord fills the world and knows every, our every word and deed. Let us then open ourselves to the Lord and call to mind our sins in penitence and faith. And so let us confess our sins, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with our neighbour. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, 
Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Hear the word of the Lord through the prophet. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. And allow God to have your scarlets and your crimsons this morning. Just hold them before him and acknowledge them. Lord, they are there. We don't like to look at them, but they are there. The thoughts, the deeds, the things we have done and haven't done. And we have been contaminated by the sin of a nation. And so we look to you, the only God, the only one who can cleanse. And as your life belt floats in front of us, we reach out and take it. For on it are these words, though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. So almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you. Pardon your sins and set you free from them. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Say it again. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Set us on fire that your brave witnesses, ready to bear the cost of our discipleship, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit. One God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, Heavenly Father, having turned our back on the world, we turn to your Son and say that his word, the living word, will reach into us this morning. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And we Please, reading. will you stand for the reading of God's word? A reading from Hebrews chapter 11, 29, through to chapter 12, verse 2. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as on dry land. But when the Egyptians tried to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after the army had marched around them for seven days. By faith, the prostitute Rahab because she welcomed the spies, was not killed with those who were disobedient. And what more shall I say? I do not have time to tell about Gideon, Barak, Samson, and Jephthah, about David and Samuel and the prophets, who, through faith, conquered kingdoms, administered justice, and gained what was promised, who shut the mouths of lions, quenched the fury of the flames and escaped the edge of the sword, whose weakness was turned to strength and who became powerful in battle and rooted foreign armies. Women received back their dead, raised to life again. There were others who were tortured, refusing to be released so that they might gain an even better resurrection. Some faced jeers and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were put to death by stoning. They were sawn in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in sheepskins and goatskins, destitute and persecuted and ill-treated. The world 
was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and mountains, living in caves and in holes in the ground. These were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised, since God had planned something better for us, so that only together with us they would be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. This is the word of the Lord. Psalm together. Today the psalm set is Psalm 10 from verses 12 to 18. Arise, Lord, lift up your hand, O God. But you, God, see the trouble of the afflicted. You consider their grief and their pain in their hands. The victims commit themselves to you. You are the helper of the heart. Break the arms of the wicked man. The Lord is king forever and ever. You, Lord, hear the desire of the afflicted. You encourage them and listen to their cry. Defending the fatherless and the oppressed, so that mere earthly mortals will never again strike terror. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Please will you stand for the reading of the gospel. Listen to the good news proclaimed in the gospel of Luke, chapter 12, verses 49 to 56. Glory to Christ our Savior. I have come to bring fire on earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. But I have a baptism to undergo, and what constraint I am under until it is completed. Do you think I can bring, do you think I came to bring peace on earth? No, I tell you, but division. From now on, there will be five in one family divided against each other, three against two and two against three. They will be divided father against son, and son against father, mother against daughter, and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He said to the crowd, when you see a cloud rising in the west, immediately you say, it's going to rain, and it does. And when the south wind blows, you say, it's going to be hot. And it is. Hypocrites. You know how to interpret the appearance of the earth and the sky. How is it that you don't know how to interpret this present time? <coughs> this is the gospel of Christ. Praise Christ our Lord. Would you bow your heads and let us pray? Lord Jesus, we pray that you would increase our faith and open your word to our lives and our lives to your word. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Please sit down.
On Wednesday at the Bible study, we were looking at the gospel. And I said, it's one of those passages that you don't easily preach on because it's just sort of one of those passages. Um, and the great thing about the Anglican lectionary is that there are inevitably three passages, an Old Testament, a New Testament, and a gospel, so you can get away without reading these uncomfortable words that Jesus said. Um, and we can look at Hebrews, which is all about faith and the heroes of the faith. Um, and then that, that weighed upon my heart, and so I've ended up feeling, well, <laughs> maybe we actually do need to look at the gospel, despite the fact that it is not an easy read. Um, but we'll launch into it from the, the, the Hebrews passage. In Hebrews, the writer's going through a list of faith and the people that have been faithful to God and the impact that they have had. And he ends up pointing us quite clearly to Jesus. And he says, these people and their faith, uh, it hadn't been fulfilled. They were left um, without receiving what was promised to them. He says, since God had pl planned something better for us, so that only together with us would they be made perfect. And so all these people of faith in the Old Testament were looking forward to something. And what they were looking forward to was Jesus. And the writer says, therefore, uh, fix our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. And these people in, throughout the Old Testament were looking sort of opaquely, but that's where their faith found its fulfillment. And so as we are in Christ, we are united with these people of faith and we pursue and fix our eyes on Jesus. And the problem with fixing our eyes on Jesus um, is that he said some odd things at times that we would rather overlook. And we tend to think of Jesus so often quite narrowly. And if we talk about Jesus, we say, Jesus, he is the prince of peace. We have that from the Old Testament, Isaiah 9. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And we read that at least once a year at um, Advent or at Christmas, looking to Jesus. And then Jesus comes along and he says to us in the gospel reading, do you think I've come to bring peace on earth? No. I've come to bring division. Which is a, one of those, <laughs> well, how do we then pursue this uh, teaching of Jesus? He's been looking in the chapter, and Luke has put together, a lot of Jesus looking to his second coming, saying, be ready, be aware, remain alert, because the end will come and you need to be prepared for it. And Jesus says to the people, I've come to bring fire on earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. Now, fire is used in three ways in Scripture, and certainly in, in Luke's Gospel. The one is, is fire is a symbol of judgment. The fire is going to consume that which is wrong. And so uh, John the Baptist is recorded by Luke as saying, his winnowing fork, looking to Jesus, he, they say to John, are you the Messiah? He says, not me, someone else is coming after me. And he says, his winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his, his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. He will come and gather the wheat, and the chaff will be burned up. And a little later in Luke chapter 16, uh, we have uh, Jesus telling this, the parable of Lazarus and the rich man, which you probably know. A rich man has everything he needs, and there's a poor man lying at his gate who has nothing. Eventually, they both die. Lazarus, the poor man,
goes to Abraham's side, and we're told the rich man goes to Hades, and he looks up and he calls out to, to Abraham uh, for help, because I am in agony in this fire, he says. And if Jesus is going to come and bring justice, there has to be judgment as well. If we're going to have any kind of, of um, holiness, sin has to be dealt with in some way. And we too easily forget judgment. But Jesus comes to bring fire. Fire is also used in scripture as a refining agent to make things better. And so Malachi writes, Who can endure the day of his coming? Who can stand when he appears? For he will be like a refiner's fire or a launderer's soap. The refiner's fire, you take the metal and you throw it into a, uh, a pot and put it in the fire, and it would be heated and heated and burned until eventually the impurities were burned off and you were left with just the, the pure metal. And they say that the, the uh, refiner of silver would look into the, the pot, and when he could see his reflection, when he could see himself in the metal, he knew it was now ready. Jesus prays, and that he's come to bring fire. And this refining makes us better. Peter writes, in all of this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith, a faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. As Jesus comes to bring refining fire, our faith will be stronger and more durable and more valuable than gold. And the third illustration that Luke gives us of fire is at Pentecost. As the disciples are gathered together and waiting on God, there's a sound like the blowing of a mighty wind. We're told they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. And all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. And Jesus says, I've come to bring fire. Fire of judgment, fire to refine, and fire to empower us as we walk with him. And if we're going to walk with him, we need to recognize, he says, that he's come not just for peace, but there will be division as well. From now on, there will be five in one family divided against each other, three against two and two against three. And he starts looking at the closest relationships and how they're going to be split And what it comes down to is there is no middle ground. Jesus has said, those who are not with me are against me. And he said to people, take up your cross and follow me. And we, some, we like to, the world likes to think that there's some really nice people, there's some really bad people and most of us are somewhere in between, and it really doesn't matter. And Jesus says, no, in actual fact, you're in or you're out. And when people are out of the faith and not part of God's family, they cannot understand so much of what we do within God's family. And there will be division. They won't get it. They won't understand it. They certainly won't buy into it. And for some people, that will be a real challenge because that can lead to breakdowns in families. For many people, it's a, well, as long as you don't talk religion at the Christmas dinner, you're welcome. Um, 
and that keep your religion to yourself. We won't have anything to do with it. We'll tolerate you, but no more than that. But there are some people for whom it is, you are dead to me. You have turned and you've gone and you no longer count. And if you live in a Muslim society and you are converted, it is your family that feel obliged to take you before the elders and have you executed. And Jesus said, there will be division. Fathers will be against sons and daughters against mothers. So what do we do with a prince of peace when we have this kind of division? You see, we tend to think that when Jesus speaks about peace, he's talking about here and now, that I'm having a wonderful time and I'm get on well and I'm friendly with everybody. We, we try and do that, but sometimes people don't, won't want that. But Jesus is talking about a far more profound peace than that. As Paul says to the Romans, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, all these other divisions that we suffer are passing. Um, even if you are completely ostracized by your family, it lasts for a number of years. If your family are so upset with you that they have you executed, it lasts even shorter. But if you are cut off and not at peace with God, that goes on forever. And Jesus comes and says, I've come that you might have peace with God. He is the Prince of Peace. And Jesus then says to the crowd, you can see the signs of the weather, but you can't see the signs of the time. They were at a place where they could see what Jesus was doing, but they didn't see who Jesus was. When John the Baptist uh, was puzzled, he was imprisoned. He sent some of his disciples to Jesus. We're told they came and asked him, are you the one who is to come or should we expect someone else? John the Baptist wants to know this. And Jesus', re Jesus response to them wasn't, yes, I am the Messiah. I am the one John said was coming. Instead, he says to the people, go back and report to John what you see and hear. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. He says, that's what's going on. Go and tell John what, about that. And John will see, because that is happening, this is the Messiah. And all the people Jesus was speaking to had seen that. And he says to them, you still don't get it. You've seen the signs, you've seen the miracles, you've seen the healing, you've seen what is happening, and you're still holding back on uh, acknowledging the Messiah. And then he continues, and he says to the people, why don't you judge for yourselves what is right as you are going with your adversary to the magistrate? Try hard to be reconciled on the way, or your adversary may drag you off to the judge and the judge turn you over to the officer and the officer throw you into prison. I tell you, you will not get out until you've paid the last penny. What is Jesus speaking about here? The thing that makes most sense to me is not saying sort of try and sort out your legal affairs um, in time on earth. But who is the person who is not reconciled, who we're unreconciled with? Who is the person that would be our adversary at the moment. It would be God. As soon as God will hold us to account, we will be judged. And Jesus says, make peace with your adversary. Make peace with God while you can. He 
because if you don't, I tell you, you will not get out until you've paid the last penny. And how much do we owe to God? The last penny will never be paid because it is an unpayable debt. And Jesus says, before you get to the judgment, before you appear in court, make your peace. Do that now. As Paul says to the Romans, uh, the hope we have is that if while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more having been reconciled shall we be saved through his life? We are reconciled to God by Christ. And Paul says to the Corinthians, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Have you been reconciled? I think many people have, and we tend to just almost take it for granted and it becomes second nature. But think of the profound privilege of being able to say, I am reconciled with God. I have peace with God through Jesus. And I can face the end of my life and I can face eternity and I can face judgment with complete equanimity because of Jesus. God reconciled us by Christ. We are his children. What a profound blessing that is. And as we come and gather around the table for communion, it's a reminder to us of what Jesus did and how we are reconciled. And we say, take that with us into the world, Lord. And we will be agents of light and reconciliation. And if you're not convinced that you're reconciled, now is the time. Be reconciled with God. Be reconciled on the way. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we pray that the fire of your passion will burn within us. We pray, Lord, that you would consume what is evil and wrong, that you would empower us that we would be able to face the challenges and the judgment and the condemnation and the, the um, belittling of the world. We'd cope with those divisions. But that we'd stand on our reconciliation with you and we'd face eternity with joy and we'd have good news to share with the world. Lord, renew our faith. Draw us back to you. Amen. We continue in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who taught us to pray and to give thanks for all people, receive our prayers this morning for your church, that it may know the power of your spirit, and that all your children may agree in the truth of your holy word and live in unity and godly love. We thank you this morning, Lord, for an improvement in the COVID situation in our country. We thank you that fewer people are in hospital on ventilators. We thank you that more people have been vaccinated and we ask, Lord, that we will understand more and more how much we need you in this situation. We thank you too that our worship is slowly returning to some sort of normality. 
We pray today for our country and its government. We ask especially that plans will be made to improve the economic situation, to give more people, and more people jobs. We understand, Lord, that life in many people's existence is entirely about jobs. Give our leaders wisdom and confidence to get the economy going again. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, in our country at the moment, we pray particularly for our police. We understand they appear to be badly led and poorly trained, but for many people, they are the last or only line of defense. We ask you for guidance in respect of their leaders. We ask you to give them strength and wisdom. We ask that the police force will begin to understand that they are really there to serve the people at every level. Thank you, Lord, for the efforts of the NPA. We thank you that people are starting to be brought to justice, and we ask that the procedures that continue will be fair and comprehensive. We pray that our justice system may begin to understand the critical part they play in the life of our country. We pray, too, for the Marikana victims. We pray for their families. We pray for everybody who has been so appallingly affected by that disaster 10 years ago. We ask you to give them peace. We ask you to give them closure. We ask you to let them know again that vengeance is your prerogative. And we ask you to remind us that our responsibility, responsibility as your church is to let them know that you are the way and the future. We ask this all, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. In a minute, but not now, if you turn and look out of the window behind you. Thank you, Mervyn. <laughs> you see a tree in blossom. And just the other day, to all intents and purposes, it was dead. But now it is alive. And it's seen to be alive. And it talks of a future and a hope. but it came through the winter. And we have lived for a long time in the winter of life. And so much has died in the church and around the church, in people's lives. But God says, for the time being, there's still the possibility of spring. But one day, as Ian was challenging us, the winter will continue forever for some. And no matter what happens around us, as those who have come under the cover of Jesus, we need to be the ones with blossom. Or we're the ones with life. And it needs to be seen. And so I think we should just take a moment again to be quiet. To say to the Lord, I'm sorry for the things in my life which maybe haven't been resolved. And in the light of the challenge of today, to say, Lord, as best I can, I turn to you. I put my hope and my trust in you. And no matter the fires that may go on around me, I trust in you to see me through. And 
and even to burn away what is not of you. So that I too can blossom into the fullness of your love. So just be quiet for a moment. And we pray, Lord, that as we go forward, we'll go forward as people of your word and not as people sucked into the thinking of the world because it seems so convenient. And so Jesus says, my peace I give you. Not as the world gives, give I unto you. My peace I leave with you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. For in me there is peace. The peace that passes understanding. The peace of eternity. So the Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord lift up his countenance upon us and give us peace. Amen. Do you know, I think it would be suitable today, if, as you stand, to turn to the person next to you and say, forgive me. Just forgive me. Forgive me. <laughs> for your love, thank you for the work that you've begun. Thank you for the way it grows when we look to you to overcome. Arise, O Church of God, and give Him praise. Open up your hearts, receive His grace. Sing along in thankfulness for all the things He's done for you. Tell Him from your heart you love him too hear our praises lord we sing to you may our lives reflect your ways of truth help us to complete the race with joy as we behold your face alpha and omega we trust you Father God, we thank you for your love. Thank you for the work that you've begun. Thank you for the love that flows. Thank you for the way it grows when we look to you to overcome. When we look to you to overcome. Because today seems such a day of the Lord's blessing, I think as we start, it would be good to just hold before God those who can't be here. And so we ask his special blessing as we meet on Gavin Campbell, 
Phyllis Chait, Charles Metcalf, Rob Hoffner, Steve Nirkham Thorne, Joshua Jackson, Judy Ward, Penny McCrory, and Carol Be Beadle, and anyone else whose name isn't on the list. And as we meet with God, may they be carried in our hearts into his presence. God, our generous Father, has given us all that we have and enjoy. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. With this bread that we bring, we shall remember Jesus. With this wine that we bring, we shall remember Jesus. Bread for his body, wine for his blood, gifts from God to this table we bring. We shall remember Jesus. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's right to give him thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. Father, we do this in the remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. It is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in the remembrance of me. Father, do this in the remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. And now, with your whole church throughout the world, we offer you the sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Won't you sit as we pray? And because of Christ, we can dare to call him Father. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And now the bread that we break. Is it not a sharing of the body of Christ? We who are many are one body for we all partake of the one bread. Every time we eat this bread 
and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And now, Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, the redeemer of the world, give us your peace. For we do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may ever dwell in him and he in us. And so draw near and receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. And can I ask you to stand to, to receive communion on the right-hand side of your chairs so that we can come between you and to indicate to the lay minister whether you wish to have wine or grape juice. And as you hold out your hands to the sieve, you're saying to God, I give you myself. And as you receive, he gives you his salvation. In the quiet of this moment, cause my heart to be at rest. I am longing for your presence. Let me feel your tenderness. Let me join in sweet communion. Draw me to Spirit overwhelms me, and I see your lovely face. Lord, I want to be with you. I want to know your heart. I want to be cherish every moment that I spend alone with you. You're my joy and inspiration, source of all that's good and true. Let me join in sweet communion. Draw me to your place where your spirit overwhelms me and I see your lovely face. Lord, I want to be with you. I want to know your to be with you. I 
So we give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious. God our Father, your Son is our peace, and his cross the sign of reconciliation. Help us who share the broken bread to bring together what is scattered and to bind up what is wounded, that Christ may bring in the everlasting kingdom of his peace who is alive and reigns, now and forever. Amen. Father Almighty, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out into the world in the power of the Holy Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. And God, bless Africa. Guard our children, guide our leaders, and give us peace for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. And Father, we pray that you'll so bless us that the seeds of life that you've planted within us may blossom, may blossom may blossom and bear fruit to your glory. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. And so, the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Rest upon you. Move amongst you. Guide and lead you. Empower and enable you and remain with you always. Amen. For those who'd like it, there's prayer after the service over in the corner. And if you've been touched or you need to get on better terms with God, go and do it now. This is your chance. But before we sing our final song, glory to God, whose power at work among us can do infinitely more than all we ask or conceive. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Roger. Shall we stand and sing the life light? <clears throat> Without you there's no hope There's a dark road leading to nowhere Death, pain, sadness Jesus, with you there's peace and joy A purpose, a plan, a meaning Light, light, your love Forgiveness of all that's so human a dead weight removed from my shoulders A burden that so often proves impossible to carry Except you have taken my 
my sin from me You have given me life, given me life Your coming revealed God's love for me For us, for all to see You're the way, the life life It need never be dark again Thank you, I love you It will never be dark again you're the way, the life lies, it need never be dark again. Thank you, I love you, it will never be dark again. For those who put their trust in you. Lord, once we did not know. Lives were filled with darkness, lost, blind, sinful. But now we are lighting you to shine like stars in the universe. Righteousness, truth be fruit that's found in us. For the Lord our God is our sun and shield. Bestow his favor and honor on us. Withholding nothing back that's good from those who walk along his path. To the way, the life life. It need never be dark and never be dark again. I love you. It will never be dark and never be dark again. The light life. It need never be dark again. Thank you. I love you. It will never be dark again. For those who put their trust in you. The life life, it need never be dark again. Thank you, I love you, it will never be dark again. You're the way, the life life, it need never be dark again. Thank you, I love you, it will never be dark again. For those who put their trust. And the Lord says to you this morning, I have loved you with an everlasting love, a love that cannot be quenched, a love that knows no end, a love that has no limit, and a love that can forgive anything and everything you have ever done and may ever do. Now go in my name and love in my love while there's still time in the world. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen.